welcome to another edition of What the Fuck, Happening's YouTube Atheist Community and Instagram Fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another Sunday. Ugh, Easter. Ugh. Yuck. Yuck. I feel like Easter. <laughs> I feel like something stale. Anyway, um, yeah, it was a good night last night, Stickam. Uh, Metamorph was in the room early. And, uh, you know, we had a nice conversation about how, you know, pathetically stupid the human race is. And, uh, yeah, so it was good. Um, just kind of validated the point that, yeah, well, the argument's been made, it's been said, there's no real counter-argument except I want, or I feel, or some other kind of mush. Um, you know, life is fundamentally, um, a replicating molecule. Uh, we're just blighted with all these emotional mechanisms, uh, these need mechanisms that keep us in the game as individuals. And somehow we just keep extending that onto another generation, you know, because something hatched us and raised us that we think that's our job. Yeah, well, that's how they did it, so I'm going to do it. Um, just redundantly playing the game. And, you know, a big giant percentage of the population doesn't play the game. I mean, they step away from that bullshit. And uh, they don't procreate. They don't build a life around that. Um, and, uh, but, you know, they can't stop the game by their behavior. They have to stop the people who keep making pieces to play the stupid game. Uh, so anyway, I've already made the argument over and over and over and over. It doesn't matter. Just, uh, you know, life is just pathetically insidious. And, you know, the, the closer you are to being in the dungeon, you know, being in the hard places, um, I mean, the more obvious it is, of course. I mean, the better you feel, um, the more, the hungrier you are, uh, the more you're in the battle, and the, you know, the, you see this stuff flying around, and you're just catching it, and you're throwing it, and you're catching and throwing. The more you're playing, yeah, the less you have, yeah, your brain is going to be preoccupied with things like purpose and mission and all that other stuff because you're in the game. And it's as soon as you slow down a little bit, as soon as you stop spinning in the wheel, you can start looking around and seeing what the thing is made out of, and that's when it's, you know, you have to draw your conclusions. You have to create your understanding in those moments and, and kind of try to take that with you to the better places. Um, you know, I have the advantage where, yeah, I've always been a little uncomfortable. Um, you know, I haven't had a whole lot of time in my life where I felt really comfortable, like everything was going to be okay. <laughs> you know, I was always a bit of a worrier and a fretter, and uh, so getting caught up in it was never a problem for me always the lack of momentum um, but really it's not about your psychology this is a, a philosophical point and it should be able to be made you know to, to any human being no matter what they're feeling even if they're in perpetual bliss they should be able to imagine in their head those circumstances where bliss is not to be found where comfort is not to be found where they watched or they saw some horror some some tormented little animal half smashed by a, a car or something and you know just uh, I mean if you haven't seen that kind of shit you haven't you really haven't seen what life is at its core the brutality of it um, you know when the cats I feed got run over this week and uh, you know I've, I've seen the cat every day for whatever eight or so years and seven whatever it is um, and, uh, yeah, and just in a day, it's gone, and, you know, the whole, uh, I mean, it's just stupid. And, you know, and it's, you know it, it, it's probably better off, yeah, because, you know, all it did was fight with other cats and get itself beat, the, the shit kicked out of it, and, you know, infections, and, and, you know, it was just always living just to, to regain its strength again so it could go back into the war and fight again and get beat the sh get the shit kicked out of it and then struggle to survive and then get strong again so it could go back out and kick the shit out of something else. And it's just, it's just an insidiously stupid mechanism. Uh, but anyway, that's a video. It's really not a what the fuck, sorry. But there really isn't what the fuck. There's just no nothing to talk about. Everything's just... So, not interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Everything's just so not interesting. 
And what else is... There's just not much to say. I mean, I did do a couple of videos this week. Uh, some of them not too bad, I suppose. And, uh... Did a couple of those TED Talk things, but they're, you know, they're not too interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm really disappointed, actually. They're just almost horrible. They're almost insufferable. They're almost hard to watch. Um... What else? Yeah, distracted by a lot of shit. So, yeah. Just, it's not a good time for me. But it's nice weather and all that crap, so hopefully I'll recover. I'll gain my strength back and then get back into the war. It's just, ugh. It's for what? It's all quite dismal. Dismal, I say. Yeah, I really can't think of much that's going on. Amazing Atheist made some TJ Does Life videos, but, you know, they really weren't too good. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, not really, not very interesting. And the, the one concept that was a little interesting was was fetish cannibalism. I just, I thought that was kind of bizarre, you know, cannibalism as a fetish. I just really can't see how you do that. I mean, I can, cannibalism, I got no problem with, you know, eating dead humans. But, um, you know, how you turn that into a, an experience of some other kind, more than just something where you're just getting food, I don't really get. So, all right, a little bit of wind. So, I probably need to talk louder, such. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, what else? I just, uh, don't, nothing occurs to me. Yeah. It's kind of just a dead zone. Just this still dead swampy sea of YouTube. And there just is, you know, little bubbles of stuff, and you think something's going on there, and you move the seaweed away and say, well, nope, nothing there, though. I mean, it's kind of funny. I mean, places you think there would be a ton of life are sometimes just... I guess they have so much bacterial life or some other kind of life that nothing else can live in there. And so they're kind of sterile, even though they have all this, they have, they have all that fertility, they can't do anything with it. That, that for a brief moment came up in Stickham again, you know, the whole idea of what, you know, how, how probable life is in the universe. And, um, you know, it just seems, the more I think about it, the more I think about what life is doing and, and, and how there's nothing else doing anything like it. There's no other piece of chemistry that's even come close. And, um, you know, in any other place in the universe that we know of, every other place we look, any rock we turn over, all we find is one DNA molecule's ancestors. There's no other DNA. There's no other NEA. There's nothing. There's nothing that's coming close. So it... it um, uh, you know, the more sensible argument is is that this is a product of some sort of bizarre, um, bizarrely unusual, um, not common chemistry. And that then that's even assuming the, the, the first, you know, just getting to a plant-style organism, let alone getting through all the other stages of evolution that might be even more preposterously unlikely. I mean, we really could be the product of a sequence of, you know, preposterously unlikely events in terms of somebody winning, you know, ten lotteries in a row or something. You know, just something that you just can't even calculate or, or ponder how it would seem like that just is not going to happen. Um, yeah. Um, so anyway, I mean, those kind of perfect storms just are too, you know, rare. Um, yeah, and you can always add one more element and just make it that much more improbable. Just add one more element, one more element, one more element. All you need is one more variable to multiply the whole thing into ludicrous numbers. So anyway, that's a little consolation, I suppose, is the fact that at least this stuff isn't likely common. Um, but look what it's made out of. It is just this consuming thing. These plants consume the sunlight, you know, put it in a little battery form. The other organisms steal the battery juice, 
Um, you know, they go roaming about with their bigger batteries inside their body, and other animals go to steal those batteries, that energy from them. I mean, it's all just an energy theft game. Um, and here we have all these complex tools and attributes just to f play a game where all you're doing is basically stealing batteries from each other. You know, it's like a little bunch of, it's like making little robots and, and throwing them in an arena. And the game is the robot wins whoever can open the compartment and steal the batteries out of the other robot. <laughs> you know, and that's, that's all that's going on here. We just have a toolkit designed to go into the arena and steal batteries. Uh, and we do it in this gang warfare way where we have a little social network, a little family clan. We go into the world and bash things to bits and steal their shit. Um, or we can cultivate these planty things and steal their fruit. Um, you know, find our way to, to gain our, our, um, uh, um, the, you know, the thing that'll push us into the future, that'll make us more numerous than the other stuff, and that's all it's about. Steal enough batteries, then you have longer life, you have longer, you have greater potential in the world, you can make more copies of yourself and keep them running if you have some sort of constant way to keep stealing batteries. Steve, just keep getting your piece of that sun. Um, anyway. Uh, so that would probably make a good video, but... <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's doing and what the fuck either. But again, there's just nothing... I can't... You know, there's just not much going on um, in the world. I mean, they had the Atheist Convention and blah, 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 blah. And, and you know, nothing profound was spoken. Nothing, you know gripping, um, nothing new, uh, even some really old, old, old retarded arguments were had, <laughs> you know, stuff that we shouldn't even be playing out anymore, shouldn't even be indulging in, um, ob obscure, obtuse, bizarre philosophies that argue about, well, what if this reality isn't real, or some other kind of crap, like, we can't know anything for sure. And like the standard is, you have to know everything for sure. We throw people in jail for their entire life, and we're not for sure. We're just beyond reasonable doubt. That's a good enough standard. And there's no reasonable doubt that this reality is not a matrix. That, that um, the, the, the detail of it is too um, extreme, um, too, too much for it to be a matrix. You can't have quanta you know, in the matrix, you know, realistically, you, you, you would, it, they would have to be, somehow it would have to be illusionary, and then you'd be able to detect that it was an illusion. There'd have to be a flaw in the, the geometry of your holodeck, so to speak. You couldn't take a magnifying glass to it, because you're going to see the pixels. You're going to see that it's a generated um, reality. So it wouldn't, you, could, you couldn't take scientific tools into the matrix because the, the fakeness of it, you're going to be able to scrape at the surface of it and find it. Uh, but anyway, that's a whole different philosophical kind of argument. Um, you know, whether there's a, a logical um, proof, so to speak, of non matrixy of the universe. Um, but then you'd have the whole argument of why they would make a, who, who would create a, a perfectly, brilliantly constructed three-dimensional matrix of crap. I mean, there's no, there's no logic to it. Why would you have a matrix where there is every appearance of suffering? And certainly my consciousness, is, if it's an illusionary consciousness in a matrix... Why would it be enduring these harshly negative experiences? I would be clearly capable of saying that would be stupid to, to generate that much, um, uh, you know, unpleasantness. The, 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 it's, it's, it's beyond what's necessary to play a good game. But again, it comes down to game. There is no good game. There's just stupid games. There's just games that are less wasteful less inefficient. I mean, that's the whole thing. It's all just made out of these rel this relative concept that you're not really chasing an absolute good. You're just chasing 
the minimizing of a negative. And that's all life is really made out of. It's not that there's anything really positive. There's only the negative first that gives you a perception of positive relative to that negative gravity. So it, the, the negative is the real force of the universe. The, the dark side is the, the, the machinery of the universe. And the only light side is just escaping the dark. Um, it's that pitiful. So anyway, what else? Is there anything else? Really, sorry. It's you know, another not great video, but... Um, yeah, I did, um, the, the gray guy has posted a few videos, they're all kind of interesting, but he did one cutting a few clips out of, he calls it maggots, I think, and, um, you know, it, it uh, takes a few clips out of that speech video I did that was pretty good, so that was a pretty good video, and, uh, yeah, what not, old fan did a little tribute video to the cat, which I thought, you know, that was just really nice of her. And, uh, you know, people are very thoughtful, <laughs> you know, and uh, I appreciate it um, and such. I don't, you know, don't show my appreciation very often or do anything, but I could say thank you, but, you know, it's kind of lame. But it's better than not even mentioning it, right? Probably. Ugh, man, the sun is nice, but, <laughs> God, I feel ill. <laughs> it's killing me. It's, 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 it's like a bug being cooked on this, the asphalt or something. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just gotta get over myself. Get into a routine. That's what I need a routine. One of the cabbages came back nicely. It's flowering. It's gonna flower. It's kind of a hilarious. Hey, look at that! The forget-me-nots. I forgot I had them. <laughs> yeah, I forgot me nots. I forgot me nots. I used to have a ton of them. They'd all be covered. The whole thing would be covered with them. But I failed dismally. My gardening routine. Yeah, used to be this whole row of them here. They used to all be all down this path. None. Look at that hard. I got to do some work. Weeds everywhere now. Years ate all my roses. Well, they didn't eat them all. They just trimmed them back. That's what they did. They trimmed them for me. There's the cat. sun puddling. Anyway, I think that's all. Oh. Yeah. I think that's all. So till next time. And such.